Hi, welcome to part three of module three, Epidemiology of Vision Impairment. Now you might already know that almost 10 million Australians suffer from eye disease and almost 50% of blindness and 70% of vision impairment is caused by conditions that can be either prevented or treated. And this information comes from the Eye Research Australia Clear Insight report from 2004. So the statistics are actually a little bit worse now, 10 years down the track. As you already know, we define vision impairment as visual acuity of less than 612, and legal blindness is defined as visual acuity of less than 660 and or a visual field of less than 10 degrees. And this is how the terms will be defined for the purposes of this module. This figure, which is adapted from the Clear Insight report, shows the main causes of vision impairment. And surely these statistics are not new to you. And we've covered these at length throughout the orthoptic course. So as you can see, refractive error, or at, that is uncorrected refractive error, makes up the largest component of that pie followed by cataract, and then closely followed by age-related macular degeneration, other diseases, and then you'll see that glaucoma and diabetic retinopathy are represented there as well. For your first task in this section, let's consider cataracts. The statement there from iResearch Australia Clear Insight Report says, everyone will develop cataract and half will have cataract surgery if they live long enough. And the forecast is that the need for cataract surgery will double in the next 20 years. Currently about 160,000 cataract operations are performed each year and this is expected to actually increase to a surgery rate of about 8,000 per million people per year. So the questions are, one, what age group is most affected by cataract? Two, Considering what you know about Australia's life expectancy statistics, how will this impact upon the numbers of ophthalmic patients requiring cataract surgery in the future? And three, what is the role of the orthoptist in relation to preoperative and postoperative care? How will the number of patients requiring cataract surgery affect where and how you will be working in the future? Pages 12 to 14 from the iResearch Australia report, which is entitled The Economic Impact and Cost of Vision Loss in Australia, will help you with your answers, but I imagine that you'll be able to answer these questions off the top of your head too. Now let's consider diabetic retinopathy. Early detection of diabetic retinopathy and timely treatment can prevent almost all vision loss related to the disease and all patients with diabetes are at risk of eventually developing retinopathy and a dilated ocular examination is crucial to detect early changes. Pa pages 15 to 18 of the Clear Insight Report will guide you to answer the following three questions. One, what is the projected increase in the prevalence of diabetes by 2020? Two, how many people with diabetes have regular ocular examinations and what is the implication of this? And three, there are several strategic interventions suggested that will decrease the impact of diabetic retinopathy. Which of these strategies most relate to your role as an orthoptist and the future of the scope of your practice as an orthoptist? And finally, we come to age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. The prevalence of AMD, especially in its early stages, is on the increase, and it's estimated that two out of three people who live into their 90s will develop the disease, and a significant proportion of these patients will suffer significant vision impairment. Females may be or are likely to be at increased risk of developing AMD. Consider this fact together with what you understand about age distribution of AMD and life expectancy statistics and indicate the potential impact of all of this combined. What does the age distribution and life expectancy together mean? Write a short paragraph for your answer. Check on pages 23 to 25 of the Clear Insight Report for help. 
part four of module three will take you through the topic of the burden of eye disease and health expectancies now that we've completed the health status of Australians and epidemiology of vision impairment.